We'll move on to the, the big uh, New England Journal paper, Gilanov's paper, um, and the CTSNN investigators. I think several of us know this paper. We speak to it. Um, and the main thing here is we're really talking about um, the outcomes of this paper. So just to remind everybody what this was, is this is a paper looking at whether a, um, a concomitant atrial fibrillation paper in the setting of mitral valve disease um, leads to increased freedom from atrial fibrillation. And then the other analysis was if you look at the ablation group and then comparing biatrial maze to standard PVI, is there a difference? So one of the take home points from this paper, what you'll see in this graph here is number one, 63% um, of patients had restoration of normal sinus at one year if they underwent an ablation um, concomitantly with their mitral valve surgery. So what does that mean? Well, number one, is that kind of real world experience? You know, we have papers from Navad and Damiano and McCarthy and others that show kind of more 90% um, sinus rhythm at one year. Is that, is this really the 63%? Is that what we would expect for folks who are doing an ablation? I think that's up to debate. We can get into that uh, maybe at the end of this discussion, but it's something to acknowledge and something that's important. But then, what the paper also showed is that there was no difference between a biotrial maze and a P. And you know, subsequent analysis by Dr. Blackstone and others have shown that if you break down these groups even further with some other um, analyses, you actually see that folks who've had a biotrial maze um, within the same data set have le left AF burden, they have less AF prevalence. Um, so if you break down this data a little more, even though it wasn't originally presented in the New England paper, there is a significant difference um, between these two procedures. And why is that? And so, you know, a lot of the background behind that New England paper, I think, comes down to there's a lot of different ways to do a maze, right? There's, a, there's different energy sources. There's unipolar, there's bipolar, there's radio frequency, there's cryo, and there's all different kind of ways that people have developed doing a maze. Um, unfortunately, there is really only one Cox maze core, and um, when you look at that procedure, um, the data is quite good, but you know, it's, it's, um, there are variations in practice, and it's important to acknowledge that whenever we look at the data. And you know, there are some folks still do the traditional uh, Cox maze three, or they're cut and sew, although a lot less, but this diagram kind of shows that there are variations um, left-sided lesions only, right-sided lesions, um, and it's important to keep all these things in mind when we're when we're looking at the data. In the New England paper, unfortunately, um, if you look in the supplemental, it speaks to kind of the different energy sources and different approaches, but uh, unfortunately, there probably wasn't as uniform as an approach as we would have otherwise liked that may um, speak a bit more accurately to the um, efficacy of a biotrial maze versus a pulmonary vein isolation. 